Okay, so uh, a few uh, more things about CPK uh, and something to be aware of. First, you guys probably noticed that uh, it was it was good that I uh, stayed more time in my office this this time, but you guys know that that's a battle that I cannot win. So I was kicked out of my office again. Um, so we're here, we're here in the sun room again. It's, it's a beautiful day outside, which is good. And let's get this thing rolling, right? So uh, uh, it, it's inter it's it it you know we have to understand that uh, if you remember I talked about that problem with the shift going on and going to the left or to the right. So it, it's different uh, when I have kind of a long series of data. Let's say I have three or four years of data being collected in a specific process or I just started collecting data about this process, right? So if I have like a big timeline, uh, I can, I can, you know, I know what all variation happen. I, I'm very, very closely, uh, more close to the uh, uh, actual standard deviation of the population. So I can have, because I have that more historical data to support it. So usually if you are, if you are in the long term, if you're collecting a lot of data, you have most of the process variation. So here's just having kind of a Pareto chart rule just to explain if I have more data, I, I know that I have more uh, than 80% of the variation that will occur, it's known. But if I don't have, if I just start collecting data, I don't have much uh, information about that. I will have like a week or two weeks or a month or so, right? Uh, so there's there's two different kinds of uh, 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 parameters to calculate here in the process capability. And what we talked about is called the C matrix, right? The C, P, K, and, and, and the CP, right? And these are associated with short-term capability. So it's just when I start collecting data. There's another matrix is called P, P, K, uh, and PK, right? Like the CPK and the CP, so the PPK and the PP. Uh, it's, uh, and they're used uh, when I have more long-term data sets, okay, longer capability. So don't mix them up. We're gonna use, we're gonna calculate more the CPK, but I know when uh, we do uh, some of those uh, analysis uh, in uh, Minitab, for example, some of those quality analysis, Using, using specification limits and all, uh, the mini tab does the, both calculations. So for you guys to understand what is the CP, what is the PP, right? What is the difference between them, right? So just keep that in your mind. We're gonna use CP, which is short-term data. Usually we don't have much. PP is when you have a long kind of historical and we're not gonna go into uh, many details there, but just to understand that whenever I already know the variation that I have so many data points that I can kind of uh, be more sure about knowing uh, most of the variation. And when I don't have many data points, I know that some shifts will happen. Okay, so uh, kind of some, some of the elements of the control chart, we know what it is, we know what it is for. So have a, a measured target, uh, understand if things are according to normal, where is the upper and lower control limits should be. Uh, so if anything happens that's outside the limits, I know that I need to keep monitor and see what is going on and, and kind of uh, uh, have some actions there to fix it, okay? Uh, we're gonna talk a little bit about control plan. So uh, control is kind of monitoring, but also make sure that you're giving the, the improved state to the people that are gonna do the process over and over again. So I wanna uh, guarantee ownership and accountability that those things are going to be you know, changed, right? And it is very difficult to change a process and it's very difficult to maintain that change. So uh, we're gonna spend, uh, uh, in, in you guys, when you go and do this in practice in industry, you're gonna spend some time to make sure that that kind of baton is passed to the next runner, right? You have that kind of a race that you run, have passed the baton. Uh, so, because that that's a critical point there. If anything happened and problems, you know, uh, with the new user or the person that's gonna do the job every day, uh, you can easily go back to the older stage and everything you've done is just a waste of time. So you have to be careful there. So uh, this is uh, uh, some, kind of report diagram example that I put it here. Uh, what was the solution? What was the recommendation? 
who is responsible, when is going to do it, what audit frequency that we're going to have. Uh, so these are some some kind of tools that we can uh, uh, propose and implement. We do that a lot with the, with the capstone projects, uh, uh, kind of to make sure that have a higher probability of of sticking. You know that that uh, suggestion being actually implemented and used. Uh, we also uh, usually, if we create an Excel file, if we create uh, some some tools and documents or Power BI, whatever software we use, uh, in in a recent project that we're doing this semester, we're actually working with their software, uh, uh, for a project management software called Workfront for Alpac Polyaster, and uh, we're creating a, a instruction manual customized for their solution. So Workfront has a bunch of videos and and manuals and, and all that kind of stuff. It's a software used for project management and have a million different things that you can do. But we're customizing a specific usage for Outpack Polyaster, managing projects of logistics department. And we're having an instruction manual kind of made and tailored to them, right? And this is, a, this is another example with Electrolux, uh, uh, appliance manufacturing company that owns Frigidaire brand. You guys know Frigidaire. Uh, and we did we did a Excel uh, uh, based tool that they can use, and there was like a manual with all the instructions. So again, these are things that help standardize and help them uh, actually implement what what we suggested. So uh, instruction procedures or SOPs uh, are are also very uh, common. So sometimes companies already have those, and you just use. The template that they have. Sometimes you have to come up with your own template. Uh, after you know the the kind of the control phase and and, and creating all those documents are done, uh, it's always good to have a good structure of uh, reporting, right? So uh, you can use different methods. It can put some of them PDCA, DMAG, DMDV, uh, you know, and it performs all these kinds of of uh, uh, mathematical models and suggestions and analyze phase and root cause analysis and all that, uh, how, to, how to kind of create this document that tells the whole story of the project, right? How do you start it? What do you investigate it? What was the current situation? What do we find out? What do we propose? And how to keep that solution going. Uh, so what we do here uh, for our capstone project is of course we've built uh, that uh, deck of slides that I talked to you guys there on the define, if you guys remember at the beginning of the semester, uh, that it our storyboard, there's our slide by slide kind of showing all the analysis. But also at the end of the semester, we create this uh, trifold board uh, that we use in the industry summit event, where have the whole story just summarized, right? Here you have a uh, uh, project done at a BMW plant, analysis of high dwell time of trailers that were, and that was a project that I worked with. You can see my name there uh, as a faculty mentor. So, uh, so this is the project that there's, there's, there's some trailers that the uh, carriers drop the trailers in their yard. And sometimes it takes a lot of time for those trailers to be used. So we created an Excel-based model that use the data from their system to create all kind of different and cool reports and actually we automate it in a way that the 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 the, the excel file uh run some macros and send email to the people that are uh responsible for those trailers telling them how long the trailer is there and then they have to take some action right and actually it escalates and it's i think it was like a week or two uh, it takes, it goes to their managers, the email. So we created uh, this kind of cool tool. And this is the whole project, right? From define, measure, analyze, improve, with its cost saving analysis and control. So I think this one was about, yeah, from two to $400,000 a year in cost savings. This is the control plan with a lot more detail. I'd love to do this in my Capstan projects. And what you do this, and this is the Electrolux actually case, uh, is, is that you kind of create some metrics for them to use in, uh, to find out if the process is uh, performing as needed or not. So we have the process element, what is the metric, what is the frequency, 
what is the target, which is the benchmark, uh, the detail, the metric, how to calculate, uh, what is the warming signal would be, uh, when should you be uh, uh, you know, worried about and start doing an action and what that action should be. So these are some guidelines of what to do and how, what metrics to uh, actually uh, follow and control so you know when things are not occurring as needed. And this is uh, usually a good thing to have. So again, we give them something that they can control and, and implement and, and, and see the results. And this is the moment you'll all be waiting for, for Six Sigma. Uh, we, we got to finish off the DMIC model. Uh, in uh, the next few weeks, we're going to talk about lean systems. Okay, so we finished Six Sigma. We're going to start talking about lean uh, next week.